in the playlist going strong for the video channel Lex Consilium Foundation we have today Ambassador Lalit Man Singh and uh, I welcome you for uh, this presentation uh, for my viewers I'd like to inform you that uh, Ambassador Lalit Man Singh is one of the senior most uh, diplomats in India he was India's ambassador to USA UAE he has had a stint as High Commissioner in UK, Nigeria. Uh, here in South Block, he was Secretary West. Apart from that, held key appointments of uh, Dean of the Foreign Service Institute and the Director General of ICCR. After his uh, tenure and service with the Ministry of External Affairs as a diplomat from 1963 to 2004, uh, he's been equally active and uh, some of the assignments very distinguished that he has held and uh, his contribution uh, which has been appreciated is for the Asia Pacific Leadership uh, Network relating to Canberra and uh, he was prince, as a principal the work for the Asia Ambassadors Group of Washington and uh, also notable is the member track 2 dialogue uh, between India, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, now ambassador today in this dialogue my first question to you is that you have uh, had an opportunity to serve with 13 of India's 15 prime ministers. What was your experience during that time with regard to them? And uh, out of these 15 prime ministers, who would you rate, count as uh, policy makers and path breakers? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your program. I, well, it's a great privilege for me. But uh, to answer your question, what was my experience of working with 13 of the 15 prime ministers? First, let me explain that the prime minister's office and the MEA are located in the same building. That proximity has continued. In fact, for the long years under uh, Prime Minister Nehru, uh, it was actually one office. So my experience has been of being in the proximity of Prime Ministers, not that I personally served under, closely under all uh, 13 of them. But the fact is one had seamless access to the Prime Minister's office, which was a great experience for me as a young diplomat. Now you ask me who I consider to be the path breakers. Well, this is a very personal evaluation. And I think there were four prime ministers who left their imprint on India's foreign policy. I will start with Prime Minister Nehru, who was uh, the founder of a new policy after independence. Then I will uh, cite Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Next on my list is P.V. Narasimha Rao and fourth would be Mr. Atal Vihari Vajpayee. You might ask and what about Mr. Modi but then we are discussing the Prime Ministers I have served. I think we will have another occasion to discuss Mr. Modi's foreign policy. Yes, that's quite right. Yeah. Now, um, who are the path breakers? I have given you a list of four. And let me explain to you why I think okay. they were path breakers. First, let's start with Prime Minister Nehru. He had a historic opportunity of defining the foreign policy of a new country, a new foreign policy for a new India. And he took upon himself that responsibility by putting his whole heart and soul into it. He rejected the British model. He rejected the uh, external policies of the British government under colonial rule and he put in place a completely new foreign policy which reflected India's culture and heritage. His most important contribution was the doctrine of non-alignment and that went back to the Buddhist roots. Prime Minister Nehru also adopted a new flag and, and put the Ashoka Chakra 
again a Buddhist symbol right in the middle of the flag. So, how do we evaluate Nehru's contributions to Indian foreign policy? Of course, he was the founder. Did it benefit in India or otherwise? I would say, yes, it brought great benefits to India, but also had its flaws. What were the benefits? If you go back to 1947, India after partition was a very uh, troubled country, very uh, poor and disorganized. And you didn't expect a country like that to play a major role in international affairs. But Pandit Nehru, without regard to the actual national strength of India, enabled India to play a major role in global geopolitics. Now, let me give you a couple of quick examples. When the Korean War ended in 1952, there was a deadlock between the major uh, power centers, that is Washington and Moscow, about what to do with the Chinese prisoners of war. And India was invited to be the peacemaker, and India found a solution which was carried out. 1954, there was uh, the Geneva Conference. A group, a small group of American and European powers which were deciding the fate, the future of Southeast Asia. India was not invited, but Nehru decided to participate anyway. He didn't go personally, he sent Krishna Menon, and our delegation was eventually welcomed. And they appreciated India's role so much that India was given a role in the transition of Southeast Asia from colonialism to its modern form. Third example, the whole uh, movement of the non-aligned countries. By 1958, when we have the Belgrade Conference, in uh, India and Pandit Nehru himself were the uncrowned leaders of the non-aligned movement. That's a major achievement for India. Now, let me turn to the flaws, and there were major flaws. And this is my personal view. Prime Minister Nehru made an error of judgment with regard to two countries, Pakistan and China. Pakistan, he, uh, uh, he made his first major error in referring the Kashmir dispute to the UN, which uh, by hindsight we know was totally unnecessary. And we are still suffering that. But even greater was his misjudgment of China. He believed that China was a peaceful country and China would collaborate with India on the world stage. That did not happen. And in 1962, India suffered one of its most humiliating moments when China unexpectedly attacked us and occupied some of our territories and withdrew. So that is my assessment of Prime Minister Nehru, his good points and the not so good ones. Let me turn to the second one, the second path making Prime Minister, that was Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi uh, inherited the legacy of Nehru, but she was different. She was equally a colossus, but she uh, established that India will recover from the humiliation of 62 and rise to greater heights. She uh, reorganized and strengthened the armed forces. She laid the foundations of an industrial economy in India. She encouraged the indigenous development of science and technology. Mind you, 1974 was the first indigenous nuclear test of India. Now, imagine another great achievement. 1983, India sent its first indigenous rocket into space. Now, the crowning glory in Mrs. Gandhi's leadership was the 1972 war with Pakistan and India's victory there, which, is, which actually spoked, split Pakistan in two and established a friendly Pakistan, uh, I'm sorry, a friendly Bangladesh on our border. I would think that this was one of the proudest moments of Indian diplomacy. Now, let me come to the, my third candidate. Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao is an unlikely candidate for greatness because of his uh, 
of his Hamlet like reputation. He was notorious for being indecisive on major issues. But surprisingly, he took three bold decisions which changed the fate of India and the future of India's foreign policy. Number one, the economic reforms of 1991, which today gives us the confidence that India will become the third largest economy in the world in the next decade or so. And last week, Prime Minister Modi gave us the assurance that this will happen in the next six years. And so, we have to be grateful to Prime Minister Narasimha Rao. His second decision was his Look East policy. This vast area of Southeast Asia, which had remained neglected for nearly four decades, was brought into partnership with India. And that was, I think, another major achievement. Third one, not as uh, epoch-making as the first two, but all the while, all the same, quite relevant, his decision to establish normal diplomatic relations with Israel. This was a big taboo in India's foreign policy. But Mr. Narsimha Rao decided to take this step and we are seeing the benefits today when India has full access to the leadership of West Asia, including Israel, which is a major participant in West Asian geopolitics. Now, I come to the fourth of my path-breaking Prime Ministers, that's Mr. Atal Vihari Vajpayee. My favourite Prime Minister because I worked the longest time under him in many capacities. Now, why do I consider him a, a path-breaker? Because he made a complete overhaul of India's foreign policy after five decades. And he changed both the principles of India's foreign policy and the diplomatic practices. Now, we'll have an opportunity of uh, going into the details in a future episode. But let me say that his achievement, Vajpayee's achievement, was in reconstructing the house that Nehru built. And he reconstructed it in a manner which made it more robust and more capable of taking the turbulence of the geopolitics of the 21st century.